The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 2nd, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Send it early. And in the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magical, magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got a mixed bag. The mix goes like this. The Dow's off 116, three-tenths. The S&P down five, about one-tenth, up 6%, or six-tenths percent for the NASDAQ, 189. One percent to the downside for the Russell, 18. Three-tenths to the upside for the semis, 11 points. A pretty mixy bag out there. What's not mixing is gold, silver, light sweet crude, natural gas, and the 30-year treasury. They're all trading lower. Gold down by 23 bucks. Silver, a little over a buck. Light sweet crude, a buck 65. Natural gas. Gas down about seven cents. The 30 year treasury off one and a half points, straight out at 112.09. Now, leading the charge dollar wise, the upside, you've got that super micro computer of 15 bucks, nearly 6%. NVIDIA, 13 bucks, 3%. LAM Research, a little over 1%, or ne nearly nine buckaroonies. Micro, micro, uh, uh, micro strategy up $7 and change. To the downside, it is Arch Resources, down $21. That's a 12% move. Alpha Metallurgical Resources, down 4.5%, nearly 12 bucks. Thermo Fisher Scientific, almost 11 or 2 percent. Oil Service ETF, OIH, is down nearly 2 and 6 tenths percent or 9 bucks. And Danaher Corp off $8 and change, about a 4 percent move to the downside. Let's begin. Let's begin by what? Let's go take a look at what's going on intraday out here. And intraday, we've got a couple bottoming patterns that have still held, even with this rising dollar. So if the market does find a bottom, it tells us probably the two areas that you should focus on, at least from a short term trade. What are those areas, Steve O? Well, I'd say the first area would really be the end. So if we take a look at these are 30 minute equity future charts up top. Here you've got the ES, the NQ, the Dow, and the Russell 2000. Now, each had formed TD nine count bottoms this morning, as well as Rhodes momentum indicator signals. If we take a look at the ES, it was a double out there. It was a bullish hammer candle that confirmed both that Rhodes momentum indicator bottom and that TD nine count. So that says your key level of support out here is going to be 4309.25. You can test it. If you close below it, we're likely headed lower. So the ES has held up pretty well, considering market breadth, by the way, all time frames, whether it's 30, 60, 240 daily, weekly, they are all TAS market breadth bearish. Spot volatility still above its 50 day exponents moving average and climbing, so to speak. So, uh, really, the ES Mini has held up very well with regard to this TD nine count Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Now, it's just been consolidating with inside its profile. So, that's a bullish structure profile with support in the 4311 to 4313 area and resistance up at 4329. The NQ is stronger. Now, it only formed a TD nine count bottom and that took price right up to its TD nine count breakdown resistance level, 14,993.50. 
150. That's the level the price must close above to suggest a further rally. Likewise, if we see that low get taken out, and that low, by the way, inside this TD9 count pattern is at 14,826, that would tell us about lower prices. What is not participating out here is the Dow and the Russell 2000. Both did complete TD9 count bottoms, both negated TD9 count bottoms. I don't have any kind of bottom signal as we speak right now, so not really sure what they're up to. Now, of course, the markets would really rally if we got the U.S. dollar index to back off. Well, here's the 30-minute time frame charts for the U.S. dollar index, or 83% of the U.S. dollar index. The euro on the left-hand side here negated its TD9 count bottom. This wants to continue to further weaken, it appears. No bottoming signal. I do have a wave seven signal that's expanding itself, but no real bottom signal as we speak just yet out here. And so if that heads lower, the U.S. dollar index heads higher. Japanese yen did form a T is going to form a well is likely to form a TD nine count top as we get to 1130. In order to do that, it must close above 149.80. But whether it does that or not, you've got a Rhodes momentum indicator top. And that remains in place unless we see a close above. This is the euro, 149.87 out there. So this has got some potential to uh, strengthen. That would mean move lower out here. Of course, the key level to watch inside the U.S. dollar Japanese yen is going to be 149.37. That's where price needs to close below to suggest there might be some hope that the U.S. dollar index will weaken as the yen were to get stronger. And as we take a look at the uh, Great British Pound, it uh, does not have any kind of a bottoming signal as we speak just yet. Um, so nothing to report on there. If we take a look at the U.S. dollar index, you can see it did form a TD9 count top. Red we were coming into the uh, open today, 9.30, 9 o'clock, and uh, it's negated that signal. It, too, much like the euro, has a wave 7 bottom. There is a wave 7 bottom present here, but that needs a lower high to confirm that pattern. So that's what's going on on the 30-minute time frame charts. Let's expand it out. Let's go take a look at a bit, little bit larger time frame. For the dollar that might be too large just yet let me come back we'll come back to that chart here we're really trying to navigate what's the u.s dollar index doing so here is the u.s dollar index here are the currency pairs that represent the u.s dollar index again with 83 percent amongst the euro the yen and the pound the U.S. dollar index has a TD nine count daily top as well, much like the equity future contracts on a daily basis have TD nine count bottoms. That pattern gets negated today with a close above 106.54. You'll want to watch that. If price closes above that, that likely continues to throw conniptions for gold, silver, and the equity markets out there. What else do we want to report on here? You can see there was a TD nine count bottom inside the Great British Pound. That is being threatened as we speak. That low out here is at 1.2. One, one, one. If we get a close below that, we're not below that just yet. But if we do get a close below that, that negates that signal. That suggests that it wants to weaken further and the U.S. dollar index would get stronger. In the case of the euro, its real key level here is it needs to close above that oscillator and change line. It needs to do it for at least two consecutive days uh, to suggest that there's some kind of legs to it. Now, we might get a TD9 count bottom pattern. Price still has to pierce the low from bar number five. This is the euro that we're taking a look at. And that low that it's got to pierce below is 1.0488. If you do that today or tomorrow out there, we could get a TD nine count bottom for it. So the TD nine count patterns or signals inside of the U.S. dollar index, they do mean something to us, but we really need to understand what's going on amongst these currency pairs out here. And not to be uh, left out, let's go take a look at those real longer term time frames out here. We take a look at the uh, euro, the real key level for it. At the end of the year, it's getting 1.034. If we get a close below that, there's an A to B equal CD to the downside takes us to about 70 cents overall. But here with regard to the U.S. dollar index, it might be forming an A to B equal CD to the upside. That could take us in the 120 level. We're bullish on the monthly, that's for sure. We're bullish on the weekly, although TD9 count top could form between this week and next. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60 minute webinar archive he just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report? For all the details and to start your 30 day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's get to our first request out here. This comes from Dan inside the Tigers Den. Wants to take a look at Nike. And he wants to take a look at Nike on a short-term basis. We'll uh, pull those charts up as well. Looking to establish, I believe, looking to establish a uh, long position. So in the case of Nike, formed that nice TD9 count bottom back on September 28th. Then on uh, Friday... Uh, simply uh, has opens up, but gaps up, gigantic gap out here. So we've got a profile. Uh, this is a profile that formed on Friday. So let me give you that information. The top of that profile is 9190. And 9190 may be the place where you'd want to go ahead and take a look at putting on a trade. I'd say between 9102 to 9190. Of course, 8974 is still open out there. And it turns out that both the center and the bottom of the profile are at the same price level. So there should be strong support at 89.74. If you're going to try to ladder into a position, 91.90, 91.03, 89.74 are the numbers. If I look at the weekly time frame chart, let's populate this. Price last week had a nice rally running. In uh oh, can anybody hear me? Hello? I hope so. That was interesting. Uh, maybe if you can hear me, just give me a high sign somewhere in the Tiger's Den. Mm -hmm. So if we take, I'll continue on with Nike. Okay, great. So Dan, as we take a look at uh, Nike out here, perfect. Thank you, guys. Uh, you can see on a weekly basis that this has been struggling at that oscillator and change line since May 5th out here. So you know that on any rally, that's going to be a real key level. That price has got to close above last week. What we saw was price got up there, tested and rejected that level. So we know that that was the real the resistance level. That price was dealing with because on the daily time frame with that gap to the upside, you know, price is already above the top of its profile. It had. Um, yeah. So there was really no reason for it to not move higher. It's going to be that weekly oscillator and change line to really keep an eye on out there on that monthly time frame. Um, the price could easily be targeting, retargeting 84.11. That's its monthly TD9 count breakout area. Now, you wanted the short term time frame chart. So let's just put this up here. Let's put up the 30 minute time frame chart. 
And with regard to Nike, I don't have anything here, Dan, other than a huge open gap. Let's put this to a – let's go down to five minutes. Now, the oscillator change line is going to be wrong on this. I'm not going to worry about that just yet unless we see some kind of bottoming signal, such as we do here. So this has a road momentum indicator bottom. So let me just uh, change this template so that it loads for all my five-minute time frames out here. All the data is correct. Uh, here we go. Okay, so now we're going to have an accurate uh, picture on a five-minute uh, basis for Dan. So, Dan, uh, you've got a TD9 count bottom that is in place out here. As long as price does not close below 93.73, um, short-term-wise, you could expect or anticipate a further rally out there. That's on a five-minute basis. Let's go to the 15. So we, get, we took a look at the 30. Let's take the 15. Let's uh, go ahead and we'll set this up. Do we see? We've got wave number seven on the uh, 15. So let me go ahead and set up this template as well, just so we can see where everything is at out here. All 15. There we go. And so now with this wave number seven, what, what price should do on a short-term time frame, Dan, is uh, make a move up to the 95.32 level. That's both the bottom of the current profile on a 15-minute base as well as that oscillator and change line, a natural area of resistance. So, Dan, does that provide you with uh, the information you were looking for from a short-term standpoint? If it does, great. If it doesn't, let me know, and uh, I'll produce that chart uh, during a break or something. Great. You or I, 95.50 will be a bit more conservative. Uh, yeah, I would say I, I would say at this stage, you know, watch those short-term time frames, which I know is one of the things that you were looking at. So watch those, uh, and maybe that will assist you with regard to this trade. So uh, thanks so much for the request, and we'll look forward to your next one. The next one that we do have is coming in from McGuppy. McGuppy inside the Tigers that wants to take a look at the GDX. And the GDX, here's what I would say to you. Today is going to be bar number eight of a TD9 count. So if you've taken heat at this stage, you're notice an A to B equals CD to the downside. For that, I'm going to look at my other system out here. And I'll, I'll look at that with you so that we can come up with some price projection levels for you. But right now, what I also want you to know is there's a TD9 count pattern that should form tomorrow, should really form between today and Wednesday of this week out there. So here there is the possibility of a uh, bottom on the horizon. Now, the weekly, which does have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside, um, that price projected, again, we'll get that off the other charts, about 2540 or so. 2554 happens to be where price on a monthly basis starts to get into its bullish structured area of support, which is between 2353 and 2554. On a 30 minute time frame chart out here, what I don't see is any kind of a bottom pattern. So price should continue to move lower out here. So that supports a further move lower. Let's go take a look at the A to B equals CD patterns that are forming, uh, that have formed on the daily and the weekly time frame. And for that, what we're going to do here, McGuppy, is go over to the black background charts because that way I can that way I can use my tool and uh, be the A to B equals CD tool that is and be accurate. So this just like the NQ, there's a couple of different A to B equals CDs. The one to one, the larger one, the one to one price projection gets us to 25.43. Uh, so you got 25.43. That seems logical. Maybe that's where we get bar number nine tomorrow as a low. Now, what you'd really love to see here, knowing, McGuppy, that you've got two potential patterns that could help us to identify a bottom. Uh, is to, I'd say, wait for a bullish reversal candle inside of the GDX since you've got the A to B equals CD pattern out there. Uh, you also are in a wave number seven situation that needs a higher low. So there is potential, but of course, what you're going to need, what everybody's going to need, we're going to need the U.S. dollar index to begin to crater. And at this stage of the game, at least as of 11, 11.24 right now, as 11.19, we didn't see any cratering take place. So I hope that helps you out with regard to the GDX. By the way, the smaller A to B equals CD, that's the one that is along the C to D leg out there. That B point did volume of 18 million shares. That B point was passed with uh, 33 million shares back on September 27th, last week. That one-to-one -one price projection, 24.48 out there. So McGuppy, I hope that helps you out with regard to the GDX. You also want to take a look at McEwen Mining. MUX is the ticker symbol. So let's switch back over to those white background charts. Give me a moment. We'll get over there, see what kind of signals we have on McEwen Mining. MUX is the tip ticker symbol out here. And MUX, so unlike the GDX, which is going to form bar number eight today, the pattern signal that we have here could be wave number seven. I say could be because that, um, you know, it's either wave number three, letter C, or wave number seven out there. But here's what we do know right now. There's also an A to B equals CD to the downside of McEwen. I'm going to go over to my other system to try to get that uh, set of projections. On the weekly basis, McEwen mining looks awful. 
You can see an A to B equals CD here. Uh, so we'll try to again figure out what those price projection levels are. Support in McEwen Mining, the only level of support that I see at this moment in time is going to be the monthly oscillator and change line. And that's at about 568. Oh, you don't even see those charts. Here you go. Now you see those charts here. Now you see the white background charts. So there's your wave number seven possibility. Letter C out there. Nothing on the weekly, just the A to B equals CD to downside. And there's your potential support level, that oscillator and change line on that monthly time frame. Let's go back to those black background charts so we can draw in those A to B equals CD patterns out here. So we're taking a look at McEwen Mining. Let's take a look at the uh, weekly time frame first out here because we just have a few seconds. So... And then I'll take a look at the daily charts here during the year break. So the A point is going to be the high in McEwen Mining from April of 2023. The uh, B point going to be July of 2023. The C point looks like July. Oh, that was July the 3rd. Then a couple week retracement in July 24th. One to one will get us down to about 586. One to 1 1.272. 495. That is McEwen Mining. Ticker symbol there. M-U-X. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome 
Welcome back, folks. So about halfway into the show, we're taking a look at McHugh and mine. And I only have one other request at this moment. It is for my Nancy and the Tigers. I want to take a look at Apple. So if you, too, would like me to look at something for you, give us a call at 877-927-6648. Or go ahead and send me an email. Send that off quickly. Send it to Steve at TFN.com. Of course, inside our Tigers Den. Well, any paying will do. So we'll look at the daily time frame charts here for McHugh and mining. Much like many charts, they have two different A to B equals CD patterns. There's the larger one. The large one is what you and I looked at for the weekly time frame that gave us a price projection of 586. That is in play. That's been confirmed with price closing below its daily and its weekly swing points with volume. The smaller one, uh, that's along the C to D leg, has a price projection there of um, 597. And uh, so we're in that 597, 586 area out there. I don't have anything to suggest that that won't unfold, doesn't have to unfold. So the only bottom signal as we speak right now, McGuppy, is that wave number seven potential uh, inside of uh, the uh, daily time frame for McEwen Mining. I do hope that that helps you out with regard to that review. So best of luck to you there. Let's go take a look at Apple for Nancy and uh, get over to those charts here. And so if we don't have any other requests, maybe what we'll do is we'll take a look at the Magnificent 7. So here's Apple on a daily time frame. Now, what we don't have, let me just pull this back to see if there's any kind of A to B equals CD pattern. Yeah, so there is no A to B equals CD pattern that I've got in place here right now that confirms any kind of a bottom. And I don't have any kind of TD9 counts or nothing. So, and with regard to profile levels with regard to Apple, unless it's trying to form something new today, let me check on my other system or where am I at? Uh, oh, I'm on still black background charts. Give me a moment. Yeah, no new profiles there. So Apple's got an A to B equals CD to the downside. Nance, 163.71 is the uh, price target there. But your question is, will this get up to 175 or above this week? And it does have that possibility. And the reason that it has that possibility is because if we look at the weekly time frame chart, you'll see that price is trading between its roads momentum indicator top, 198.23 as resistance and as TD9 count breakout level support. And that's at 170.42. If you start seeing this trade below 170.42, odds favor, yeah, it's not going to get to the 175 level this week. Now, understand that at 175.31, that is the bottom of that weekly profile. So these may be calls that you're looking to just simply uh, unload as price gets up to that level. We'll take a look at some intraday charts, see if there's anything there for you. But understand that that is a significant area of resistance or could be a significant area of resistance up at that 175.31 level. Now let's go over and take a look at the white background chart, see if there's anything here that we can gleam to help Nancy. So in a moment, we'll be over there. Uh, those are the white background screens. And this is the uh, daily time frame that we have up. So here you'll see, we already took a look at the A to B equals CD pattern. Again, no completion there, no bottom signal here. But what price is doing is trying to take on that red oscillator and change line. That is at 172.66. And if price can close above that, well, it would offer a move of uh, a further move higher, a likely further move higher. I wouldn't focus on the 175.82 level. That was a TD9 count breakout area. That level got negated. That was an old support level. I don't know that that will become resistance here. And we don't have to worry about it because at 175.31, we've got the bottom of that weekly profile. Speaking about the bottom of the weekly profile, do we have any kind of signals there? We do not. But remember, coming back to a breakout level can be a bottoming pattern. On the monthly time frame, what price is doing, it's got a new profile out here. And the bottom of that profile, and here's what's dangerous for Apple. And that is, let's say if Apple takes out the uh, current low from a few days ago, the odds favor that maybe what price is doing, it wants to get back to the bearish structured support level on the monthly time frame. And again, that formed, uh, it's forming this week out here. And that level is 174.01. Price is below the center of its bearish structured weekly profile that's not a good scene out there typically price eventually makes its way down in this case here to the bottom of that profile that's at 147.01 that could be a bit longer term picture than what we're looking at today if we look at uh, now here the other thing to consider let's take a look at apple apple closed higher on friday today will be day number three to the upside we haven't seen too often where it has exceeded four consecutive rallies so assume the rally here holds today, uh, and if you, and then I would expect if you do get some type of rally tomorrow, that is likely the end of the move of it, uh, or at least you'll get another day lower out here, another day or two lower with regard to Apple. 
So now let's lastly, let's take a look at some short term time frame charts here for Nancy just to help her out. Apple on a 30 minute basis. What do we have out here? When it formed a bottom, a beautiful road to indicator bottom that was at 10 o'clock back on the 28th. Now we're seeing a series here of higher lows and higher highs. So that's a uh, bit of a promising situation. You do have an A to B equals CD to the upside. There's a couple of them. Let's draw in the larger one out here for Nancy. So the large one looks like this. We'll just simply move that over, just approximating here, move that over to the C point. And that would say that Apple could get a one-to-one -one move up to the 175.77 area. That B point had volume of 3.4 million shares. When it was passed, it was passed with 4.5 million shares. And the current bar right now, well, you just began. That's about 2 million shares. So it does look like intraday. You've got an A to B equal C to the upside. That's from a 30-minute time frame chart for Apple. Lastly, what I'll do is I'll pull over your 10-minute chart. 10-minute chart here for Apple shows uh, – oh, that's not the 10-minute chart. But I will pull it over. I just have to grab the right spot. There we go. Now, here's the 10-minute time frame. Now, the 10-minute time frame for Apple – we need some more days out here. Why does it have such few days? It's got 30 days. That doesn't look like 30 days. We'll put 60 days. On a 10-minute, there's no way that's 30 days. That's weird. Okay, now we've got it. So on a 10-minute chart, got nothing. So it looks like to me Apple wants to continue to uh, rally. When we began the show, we were looking at the NQ that had held that TD9 count bottom. So my words of caution to you here, uh, Nancy, is uh, knowing that you've got that resistance at the 175.31-ish type of level out there, knowing that you're going to have three days of rally, and we haven't seen Apple off and do more than four days of rallying out there. So I do hope that that helps you out with regard to that request, and thanks so much for taking the time to write in. John C., the Tiger still wants to take a look at oil, which we know is just consolidating with inside its daily profile out there, but we'll try to provide more than that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to populate all of these uh, multi time frame charts out here. It's going to take a moment to do that, but I just want to remind you, uh, John, I know you have that written down. You've got support at 88.87. That's the bottom of its daily profile. This is the November contract that we're looking at. And resistance is up at the top of the profile, and that is at 91.61. There is an A to B equal CD to the upside. Should get us up to the 96.70 level. But right now, it's thing with that consolidation with inside its profile. Now we're getting ready to see the charts out here. And uh, the daily time frame, you can see, again, price testing the bottom of that profile. No real bearish pattern that is out here. The weekly says that it wants to get up and complete that A to B equal CD in the 96.70, 101-ish type area out there. The monthly chart price closed above the top of its bearish structured monthly profile last week. But the level of resistance that it's dealing with is that high from June. And that high is up at the 94.34 level. If lights we crude can cruise above that, 96.70, 97 is on the way. What about to the downside? Well, right now, the only way you're going to get any kind of potential change and change in trend signals that close below the bottom of that profile and that would get us to the that's the uh, level of 8887 five hour chart td9 count top price pull back finding support at its breakout level of 8908 same kind of pattern on the 240 which is 8931 120 uh, finding support at its breakout level of 6887 so we know the price is in support i'd say if those levels fail lights recruit heads lower we'll be right back You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call Newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Still a mixed bag out here. You got the Dow off 77. S&P is basically flat. Russell is off 18. NASDAQ 100 is up 118. And the uh, semis are up about 20 points right now. We're taking a look at uh, RIG out here. RIG is the ticker symbol. Uh, this is uh, consolidating with inside its daily profile. Uh, maybe headed back to its bullish structured support area. McGuppy, and that's between 764 and 780. I do not have any kind of a bottom pattern. Price for now is taking on a potential B point of an A to B equals CD to the downside. It's also labeled B on my chart. And that's from the trading session of September 21. Did volume there of 12.6 million shares. So far during the day, we've done 7.8. So you've got volume as price is pushing into that swing point. So if you get that, you're likely going to get back at least to the 764 area, but you do have an A to B equal CD to the downside. Let's take a look at where that price projection area could take us to. And that would take us right back into those uh, profile levels. So I would say more likely than not, RIG is targeting the 764, 780 level. We can see on a weekly basis, we're already trading right now below. We're just slightly right around the bottom of last week's low. Bottom of last week's low, 794. We're at 795 right now. Many start close above last week's low. That suggests that we're headed lower out here. And on a monthly basis, of course, it's just the first day of the month. So that would, but we're still trading below last month's low out there. Those are not good signs. That suggests maybe 658 is the target, 742 on the weekly. And we know we've got 764 to 780 on the daily time frame out there. So to confirm that we're going to head lower, I'll just leave this on the 15 minute chart. I think this is just simply from that Nike chart we looked at out here. But you'll see a TD9 count bottom that formed uh, about a half an hour ago. And the price takes out that low. That's the low of the day so far. That low is $7.87. If price takes that out, then rig is likely headed lower out there. So I hope that helps you out, McGuppy, with regard to the daily, weekly, monthly, and its 15-minute time frame chart. But lower does look like the message as we speak right now. Ready to request to take a look at NVIDIA. In order to do that, let's go take a look at the Magnificent 7 out here. We've already covered a couple of those. So let's go take a look at what those are doing. This will also perhaps help Brent, who wants to take a look at resistance areas inside of the NQ. So here are the Magnificent 7 with the Qs in the left-hand side. Now, the positive on the Qs out here, Brent, is price is trading above the top of its daily profile, much different profile than when we take a look at the NQ. But nonetheless, this is still a positive outcome right now. 361.34 is the top of that profile. 
On a daily basis, we've already covered Apple. We haven't covered Microsoft, which did form a TD Nine out bottom. Right now, prices trading above resistance. That is the top of its profile. Three nineteen. I'm sorry. That is. Uh, the, yeah, 319.52. You close above 319.52 today. Price may be set in its sights on 337.40. Google is trading above, so it formed wave number seven. Roads meant to mitigate top. Takes price, <coughs> excuse me, back to its breakout level at 128.04. Prices, if price today closes above its green oscillator and change line, and this would be at the price point of about 134.91, that's going to suggest that Google is going to head higher. TD Nikal bottom pattern on Amazon. That's going to go target its oscillator and change under top of its profile, 131.51, 132.84. NVIDIA, which is what you were asking about, basically has a double bottom, is trading above profile and oscillator and change line resistance. Looks like this wants to get back to this gap out here. The gap that I'm referring to is the one that formed on the uh, trading session between September 6th and the following session. That gap low is out at 465.80. Tesla is dealing with potential resistance. That's its oscillator and change line. And a close above that, which is 253.63, which suggests a further move higher out here. We take a look at Meta. Meta is just a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside a profile level. So if we take a look at the Qs, the Magnificent 7, I don't know the weighting inside here. Somebody in the den probably does, but it's a significant portion. What you didn't hear was a whole lot of bearishness out there. Yeah. So anyways, Brent, I hope that that helps you out. And uh, I apologize, I didn't write down who had the request for NVIDIA. But let's go take this uh, little, little segue here and go take a look at those NQ charts. And here we'll take a look at the daily and its intraday time frame. So let's pull those up. And on the daily basis for the NQ, okay. So with regard to the NQ, what we want to see, I don't know, um... Yeah, I've got a little bit of a delay. The level, the key level of resistance out here, Brent, for the NQ on its daily time frame is that oscillator and change line. The current print is around 14,992. It's 14,992.02. It changes so fast. So what level is that going to be? I, I'd use the 14,990 just to make it easy peasy, maybe 14,995. If price can close above that, that's going to be a positive outcome. On a five-hour time frame chart, the resistance levels are, first you have the top of the profile, 14,980. Then you have this uh, bear sash high uh, that is up at the 15,002 level. So, Brent, I'd write those down. The 240-minute chart, like the five-hour chart, also has a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom, as does the two-hour chart. Right now, price is dealing with resistance, top of that profile, the 240- or four-hour chart. That's up at 14,980 as well. So you have the same levels of resistance on the four hours you do on the five hour. The two hour time frame chart resistance level is going to be 15,060, 75. A close above that would be very good. On a hourly basis out here, price is consolidating with inside his profile. Resistance there is 14,973. The 30 minute time frame chart, where's resistance? Great question. Let me open this up. I mean, I'd like to say 14,993 because there's a TD Nike out breakout level. Price closed above and back below. Resistance is going to be its Rhodes Mint Dominicator top. And that's right out here at 1030. And that's up at the uh, high of 15060. But, of course, Brent, the real resistance is going to be that U.S. dollar index. Until that backs down out here, um, you could see trouble in River City. Now, right now, I do have a 10-minute delay, as you know. And we do have the U.S. dollar index trading slightly below 106.54. And that's a number to watch. If price today closes above 106.54, Brent, and you're still along the NQ, God bless you. Uh, not because you sneeze, but because the market might sneeze. It's not the ideal situation out there because that would be a, negate, a negation, if that is a word, it is now, of that TD9 count top. But remember, the euro, the yen, and the pound are the ones controlling these instruments out there. And the euro is going to form, I believe it's going to form a TD9 count bottom today. But let me just pull those charts up. We don't have any other requests out here. So let's just go ahead and do this. Let's be thorough. And shortly here, we should see the daily time frames. So just even though the daily dollar could negate its signal out there, and even though I would say that that's very bullish for the uh, dollar, U.S. dollar index out there. The caveat must be what's going on in the instrument that controls the majority of the U.S. dollar index, and that would be the euro. And so the euro yeah, still hasn't spiked that low. I don't have any kind of a bottom signal here, but if it could spike below that low of bar number five. So here's what the euro has to do. It has to spike below 1.0488. 
and it has to close below. This would be tomorrow, 1.0503 out there. The uh, pound still retains its CD9 count bottom, and the uh, yen just not participating. Looking like a stronger dollar when we take a look at the yen. That's what I'm looking at. We take a look at the euro. And the pound is kind of a more of a neutral type signal. So, Brent, I hope that helps you out with regard to resistance levels inside of the NQ. I gave you multiple time frames. Not sure which one it is that you're trading out there. But also, keep an eye on the U.S. dollar index and these three currency pairs, the euro, the yen, and the pound. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back in just a few. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Still that mixed bag out there. The Dow being down about 195. SPs off 15. NASDAQ's up 58. Russell's off 23. Semis are up five points out here. So what can I leave you with? 
uh, as we uh, continue on with our play-by-play -play here. Intraday is really what I think we need to do. So let's go over and relook at the uh, Euro-Yen currency charts. But now let's do it for the 30-minute time frame. And here, so the market, we know that the market is attempting to form a bottom. How it's, it's, however, it's really struggling. And when I say it's really struggling, if we just take a look at this 30-minute set of uh, profiles out here, I'll pull these over and what price is doing. This is the ES Mini right now. You've got over 60% of the instruments are trading below profile, 351 of them, 25 above. That is a tough road to hoe out there for the S&P 500. If we take a look at the NQ, it's just as bad, maybe even worse. 90% of the instruments, well, make that 76% uh, of the instruments are trading below profile, only 6% trading above profile for a 30-minute time frame. Nonetheless, if we look at the 30-minute time frames out here, you do have a bottom pattern inside of the euro. It's a buy the D point pattern. That's what this uh, little bullish piercing candle. Now, in order for the euro to get any kind of mojo, you got to see a close above that oscillator and change line. Currently printed about 1.051. The uh, U.S. Japanese yen, uh, when we took a look at this earlier on a 30-minute time frame, it had a TD9 count top. It still maintains that TD9 count top out here. Uh, price needs to close below 149.64 to suggest that the U.S. dollar index is going to weaken. The Great British Pound, it also has a buy the D point pattern. And so that makes that low very important out here. And price right now is struggling with that red oscillator change line. So I'll leave you with this. Markets are trying to form a bottom. It is going to be very choppy if it does do that. Watch the NASDAQ. If you are going to be long, it would be the NQ or the NASDAQ or the QQQs. That would be the place to be. Just took a look at the Magnificent 7. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll see you on Terrific Tuesday. Please have a magnificent Monday. Take care. Thanks for joining us.